If you've been watching this channel for any period of time, you know that typically when a new patient comes to my office, the first session is at 1.3, regardless of what the target pressure might end up being. And I do that because if someone's not gonna tolerate hyperbaric oxygen, I would like a 1.3 type of problem. I don't want a 2.5 type of problem inside my office. And what I mean by that is if I think that they're gonna be sensitive to oxidative stress for whatever variety of reasons, I wanna make sure that I'm exposing them to pressure over a period of time, allowing their body to adapt and improve rather than pushing them really hard right out of the gate. And then I'll work them through a series of pressures, allowing their body to adapt. But how quickly do I do that? Or how slowly do I do that? How many sessions do we do at each pressure? That's not something I've really talked about on this channel. And that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. When I'm doing my initial consult with a new patient coming into the office, in my mind, I'm covering four different topics. The first is, why are you coming here? And do I believe that there's a good match between what you're hoping to expect and what hyperbaric oxygen can actually do? As long as that matches, we can move forward. The next category is, are there any contraindications that would stop you from being able to get hyperbaric oxygen? And do I need to send you somewhere else to get cleared before you can come in? And so if you're not familiar with the contraindications to hyperbaric oxygen, we did a few videos on the relative contraindications and on the absolute contraindications. We'll put links in the description below. And so you can check out those videos later. Then together we review the expectations, what a session is like, what we expect from you, as well as what you would expect from us. And then lastly, we go into the protocol. And inside the protocol, I will have a target pressure in my mind of what I think the best pressure of oxygen is going to be based on the goals and the health concerns that this person has. Now, regardless of what that target pressure might be, we don't start there. We always start low and we build up the tolerance over time. And so what we're answering in today's video is, what does that look like? How quickly do we build that tolerance? How quickly will we increase those pressures of oxygen over what course of time? In order to answer that, the first question is, well, how acute or how important or how severe is the issue that this person is experiencing? Because if it's a chronic issue and there's no major sense of urgency, we're going to build that process slower than if this is an acute issue or if time is of the essence. In those cases, I will build pressure more quickly. Additionally, there's a question in my mind, do they have a history of other issues that might require lower pressures for longer periods of time before I'll feel safe about going to higher pressures that might be their target pressure? An example of this might be a patient with Crohn's and colitis who also has a long-standing history of brain trauma. The Crohn's and colitis, which they might be coming to the office for, I could treat at 1.75, 2.0, 2.2, 2.4. In many ways, while even lower pressures will reduce the inflammation of the autoimmunity typically, healing the intestinal lining is a lot like wound care. And so 2 to 2.4 is very realistic for a lot of those patients. However, this longstanding history of brain trauma, which I would typically treat between 1.3 and 1.5, is much more delicate tissue. We know that the brain requires a tremendous amount of oxygen and is some of the most sensitive tissue to hyperoxygenation, potentially leading to consequences like central nervous system oxygen toxicity. So I don't wanna push their brain any faster than we need to in order to get to the higher pressures which may be required for the healing of the intestinal lining. And so we've also done an entire video on this concept of treating the most sensitive tissue first. So if you're interested in that, we'll also put a link in the description below. You could check that one out later. So in a case where there's two different issues that they're having, even if their priority was one at higher pressure, I feel a need to treat that more sensitive tissue for a period of time before moving up towards their target pressure. The other factor that may play a role in terms of the speed by which we build pressure is what I perceive their sensitivity to oxidation might be. This is a tough one because there's no test for it and there's no definitive way to say, oh, I know how sensitive you are, therefore we will go at this rate. This is really something that you'll learn over time with experience treating patients. And of course, in some cases, there may be a little trial and error, but this is why we have to go slowly. So just to give you a few examples, if someone's target pressure was two atmospheres and they were otherwise relatively healthy and there was really no reason for me to believe that they needed to treat some other sensitive tissue first, and there was no reason for me to believe that they are sensitive to oxidative stress, then I would build relatively quickly. We might only do one session at 1.3, one at 1.5, one at 1.75, and their next one is their target pressure, 2.0. If at anywhere along the way, they start to show little bits of signs and symptoms of increased symptomatology at any one of those pressures, then we'll stay at that pressure for two or three before moving to the next one. So that would be a faster version. Okay, we're gonna get right back to that information in a minute. I just wanted to pause and share a new resource that we just finished developing. 
If you're in practice or about to be in practice or you've been in practice but you're trying to tighten things up and really dial in your hyperbaric practice, we put together a free ebook guide. It gives you some jumpstart tips as well as some checklists to go through to make sure that you have your policies, procedures all rolling in the right direction so that you can have a successful practice. If you're interested in that, click on the link in the description below and we'll make sure we send you to the page where you can learn more and get your free copy of our ebook. A slower version, as the example I gave before with Crohn's and colitis with a history of brain trauma, we might do 10, 15, or even 20 sessions at between 1.3 to 1.5 so that we're really helping to heal the brain. Now, that doesn't mean that the Crohn's and colitis is not going to have an effect. We've treated many patients with Crohn's and colitis, and they've seen improvements in their symptomatology even at 1.3 or 1.5. So it's not like there's not a shared benefit. There most certainly is. But again, as an attempt to not overtreat the brain, we're really wanting the brain to get stronger and to be able to adapt to pressures of oxygen so that if we need to build again towards that 2 to 2.4, their body is much more prepared to handle that pressure of oxygen. There are a few cases that are pretty severe and acute, and it's critical that we get to a higher pressure of oxygen much more quickly than those two examples that I gave you, in which case we might do 1.3 to 1.5 on their first session. So we bring them to 1.3, we get them stabilized, they stay for 10 to 15 minutes, we bring them up to 1.5, and then we finish that session. The next time they come in, we bring them to 1.5, we stabilize them for a few minutes, we bring them up to 1.75 or even 2.0 by their second or third session. For us in our offices, that's pretty rare, but absolutely there's a time and a place to have a protocol similar to that. There are also plenty of times where in my mind, it might have been a 1.75 or a 2.0 target pressure of oxygen, and they just don't tolerate hyperbaric the way I wish that they would. And so their entire program ends up being between 1.3 and 1.5 because each time we push, it seems to invoke certain symptoms that that patient is not willing or wanting to try to push through. In which case, we stay at those lower pressures, we do it for a longer period of time, and even though we never hit the target that I thought we needed to, they still see tremendous improvement. And that's perfectly okay too. My opinion with hyperbaric overall is we should all be always looking for the minimum effective dose. I don't think we need to look for the highest level a person can tolerate. We should be looking for the minimum exposure that is still going to get positive improvement without exposing somebody to unnecessary pressures, which may have more risks and consequences associated with it. So in the end, and I wrote about this extensively in the textbook that came out a few months ago, protocols are great because they give you goalposts and guidelines to follow, but you have to use your clinical judgment that just because this is the protocol doesn't mean that you just follow it to a T. It means here's the guidelines you ought to follow, but based on your clinical experience, based on what you understand about that patient, based on what that patient's comorbidities might be or family history might be, your goal ought to be have a protocol and then have a process that you go through in your office to get from this person's first visit to whatever that protocol ought to look like over some period of time, keeping them safe and being as effective as possible along the way. One of the most important reasons to follow a guideline like that is, as you know, if you've been doing hyperbaric for any length of time, this is not a short-term relationship with your patients and clients. This is a long-term relationship. In order for them to follow through with whatever your recommendations are, there has to be a level of rapport and trust. And sometimes if we push too hard and too fast and we're rigid inside of that protocol and we're pushing them harder than they're wanting to go, invoking symptoms or Herx reactions or whatever issues that they may have, they may choose to discontinue care, which will ultimately not lead them to getting the results that you want or they wanted. And that's really probably the main reason I created a process like this inside of our office. That textbook I referenced, which came out a few months ago, has so much of this information inside of that. So if you haven't gotten that already, there will also be a link in the description below. Grab that textbook and read it cover to cover. It's literally the only hyperbaric textbook designed to read cover to cover. And the feedback that we're getting from practitioners has been incredible. Thanks again for your time and attention. We'll see you on the next video. 